I am Nick Shell, a certified Enneagram coach, and I've taken off several months for making new videos on this channel because I have been writing and have now finished, and is now well into the editing stage, written a book. So I have an English degree. I finally wrote a book. Well, now I just gotta get it published. And it is about Enneagram. And it's funny because having written an entire book, well, there's still all these other ideas that came from the book. I'm like, well, this isn't gonna fit in the book, but oh, am I writing a second book right now by accident? Yeah, I, I am. And so I want to kind of flesh this idea out more and talk about it because I, th I think this is fascinating. And as I've talked to other people about it, they're like, oh yeah, that is how kind of life kind of works. So let's, let's talk about this concept of what I'm gonna call gather, rescue, cope. So this is going to specifically focus on Enneagram 6, which is what I am. I am Enneagram 6. If you want to know the specifics, my main subtype is the sexual one, this, the one-to-one. -one. I'm always trying to have these deep conversations with people, more so one-on-one, -on -one, to get to know them on a serious level. Not, not about sports, not about news. No, like deep stuff, I want to get to know you. The sexual subtype of a six, that's what that looks like. I'm also the counterphobic six, which means, am I afraid? Of course I'm not afraid. I'm gonna prove to you how not afraid I am. That's what counterphobic is. <laughs> Everything ultimately is acting out of fear, but making people think that it's not. So that's why often a counterphobic six will look more like an eight or some type of other number that is less about the typical, like, if, I think when you first start learning about Enneagram and you learn about six, you think of like C3PO, a phobic six. Oh no! You know, freaking out. Well, ultimately, Darth Vader would be on the other end of the spectrum. He's the counterphobic. And in the middle, you've got Obi Wan Kenobi. So I'm going to use that model. So I'm going to talk about this whole thing of, of gather, rescue, cope. We, we could use those same Star Wars models, but I'd rather focus on some other actors. I want, as I was writing about my book, I realized that there's certain male characters or male actors that always play the same kind of characters in every movie. So let's start out with the first stage of Gather. So I'm gonna talk about Ben Affleck. We can talk about Robert De Niro. In so many movies they make, it's like something bad's about to happen. It's the end of the world. Uh, we need to gather up a group and we need to take this on. They're, they're gathering and they're recruiting because they can see something bad is about to happen and they need to stop it. So we could be talking about uh, Armageddon that Ben Affleck was in. We could be talking about The Good Shepherd with Robert De Niro. But there's so many male actors who fall in that category. They're warning that something bad is about to happen and they're gathering and rescuing a group of people. Even if it's Ben Affleck when he's Batman, he's recruiting this group to face the bad guys. Stage two would be rescue. This would be Chuck Norris. This would be Tommy Lee Jones. And Tom Hanks, yeah, by default, is an action hero. In so many of his movies, he's saving people. Like, the bad thing that Ben Affleck, Robert Nero already warned about has already happened. It's happening right now. And in the moment, somebody like Tom Hanks needs to save you, whether he's flying the plane, flying the boat, Whatever, he's, whatever vehicle he's driving or whatever he's doing, even when he's Forrest Gump, he's an action hero. He's providing stability. And that's what Enneagram 6 is, providing stability. You're providing stability when you're gathering and, re and recruiting people, building this army. You're providing stability when you are rescuing people. And then the last stage, cope. This would be any Paul Rudd movie ever. I would put Ben Affleck in, in this category a lot of times. Uh, often Steve Martin. So many Enneagram sixes where it's the cope stage. The bad thing they were already warned about, okay, the bad thing already happened, everyone's rescued, now what? Cope. I mean, even Dinner for Schmucks, the cover of that, if you Google it right now, Paul Rudd, and you'll see Steve Carell, and Paul Rudd's doing something like this. And, and often that's Paul Rudd, just like the grumpy guy that like, all right, what, what do I have to do? What, what's the thing I'm supposed to say? Where do I have to go? What do I have to be? What's, what's the thing? Whether he's in This Is 40, uh, specifically in that movie, uh, he, he plays a role. It's coping. 
Now for me personally, that's what, where I'm at in life. I'm in, I'm in the cope stage. Like nothing really surprises me anymore. Nothing really excites me anymore. I've pretty much seen what I'm going to see. There's not much new for me to see. And now, you know, some may call it midlife crisis, whatever coping stage. I accept things for what they are. I don't have unrealistic expectations. I don't have fantasies. I pretty much know what to expect. I'm 42 years old. Here's the roller coaster. I'm 42 now, and here I go. I, I know this isn't going to end well, you know, it's not. Okay, well, I've got left of life. Let's cope. And so you see that with male actors that are Enneagram 6. And all of these actors I've named just off the top of my head in this video are all Enneagram 6. They, as actual real life human beings outside of the acting careers, are wired to provide stability. And so I think, you know, and my book that I've written teaches that we're all nine types, but we have a base. So for those of us who are six, we know this all well, too well. We're gathering, we're rescuing, we are coping and or helping other people to cope with the thing that we went through. Isn't that pretty interesting? But it's not just exclusive to Enneagram Six. It's, it's all of us. We all fall in this category. I feel like that's often how life is. It's a cycle that we, that we see. Okay, so nothing, nothing bad's happening right now? That's great, it, it's peace. Uh, we can dance like at the end of the first Star Wars movie, uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, okay, good. Well, give it five minutes because, oh, okay, now I see something on the horizon. Uh, oh, okay. So we better gather and warn people uh, about this. Uh, okay, let's recruit people for our army. Okay. Okay, here it is. Here come the bombs and the war and the snakes or whatever, the aliens. Okay, here, here's the aliens. Now they're here. Okay, well, let's, let's blow them away and, you know, let's rescue people. Okay, fast forward. Okay, well, we cleaned, uh, we cleaned them all out of here. Now let's, like, clean up the mess and let's, like, rebuild. So, you know, that's, that's Kobe. Oh, and, you know, there's, you know, psychological trauma coming along with the alien invasion and the snakes and the wars and the ground opening up and the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty falling in the ocean, all that stuff. Okay, so yeah, I guess we need some therapy for that. Oh, no one has a therapist? Okay, I guess I'm gonna be a therapist now. I guess that's the thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna help everyone cope their way through this and in the process of that, I guess I'll learn how to help myself deal with all of these things. So is this sounding a little bit too real? If not, it's probably just because you haven't gotten there yet. It's probably because you're not midlife yet like I am. But I feel like that's a narrative of adult, adulthood that we see is, is these three stages. But I do feel, for me specifically, I'm in that cope. Your comments belong right here.